What's up guys, welcome to another range day. Today we're gonna to be shooting my eight inch CZ Bren 2 SBR. Guys, if you enjoy the content that I'm making, then please make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a message down in the comments section. I hate asking, but it really does help the algorithm a lot, so I would really appreciate it. And if you ring the bell icon, you should get notifications when new videos are released as well. Additionally, if you want more Chester's Hobbies content, you can follow me on Instagram where you can see what I'm working on and get previews of upcoming videos. And I'm also pretty active on Reddit if you'd like to follow along with the conversations there. All right, well that's enough of that. So back to the gun of the day, my Bren 2 SBR. So if you saw my Bren 2 first shots video, you know that I absolutely love this gun the first time out, but I had a slew of upgrades I was considering. I'm happy to say that the Form 1 I filed has been approved and all the upgrades I wanted to do have been completed, so my Bren 2 is now an SBR with a ton of cool upgrades. So let's talk about what I did. We're going to do this one Garand thumb style and go tip to butt here. So I really like the way the dead air single pour key micro break ran for me last time, so no changes there. But as I mentioned in my last video, I was going to have my gas regulator upgraded by HB Industries to have a tuned suppressor setting, and that's exactly what I did. I shipped it out to them and it was back in my hands a week later, which is an excellent turnaround. I've only tested it suppressed for a few shots so far, but the results were really exciting so I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys today. Now, I talked about the handguard in the last video as well, and while I did like the OEM handguard aesthetically, it really left a lot to be desired in terms of functionality. It only had one M-Lock slot on the underside and was positioned in such a way that it really wasn't going to be practical to run a vertical foregrip the way that I normally like to. So I swapped out the OEM handguard for this M-Lock handguard from HB Industries, and so far I really like it. It's actually notably lighter than the stock setup while adding a good amount of rail length, which I'm a big fan of personally because it allows me to place the vertical grip further out towards the end of the barrel to get extra leverage with my support hand when controlling recoil. Now for the vertical grip, I decided I want to try something something new, so I installed this aluminum M-Lock vertical grip from Troy Industries. I think it looks pretty good and it feels good to me so far as well, so I'm looking forward to trying it today. Now from there, I added the HB Industries extended charging handle. I actually don't think this upgrade is really necessary, but I do like it. I mainly got it, honestly, because I was already ordering a bunch of HB Industries parts and getting one more item gave me free shipping and it matched some of the other parts I was ordering, so eh, why not? It's definitely a quality made part that was easy to install and it gives the user a little extra leverage when racking the charging handle, so I do like it. I'm still using the Holosun AEMS or AIMS Red Dot with a CZ backup iron sights, which is a setup I've really been loving, actually. Now on the receiver, I made a couple of adjustments as well. The biggest thing I did is I swapped out the stock trigger shoe for the HB Industries trigger shoe. I often find that swapping the trigger shoe doesn't necessarily make a huge difference, but this is actually one of the biggest improvements I've ever seen from just swapping the shoe. The stock trigger has a lot of over travel, which made it a little bit uncomfortable for me. This HBI trigger has a slightly altered geometry that virtually eliminates over travel, while effectively shortening the trigger reset and maximizing the impressive stock pull weight. This trigger is actually pretty great now, in my opinion. I'm super excited to run it today. Then I swapped out the small pistol grip backstrap for the medium pistol grip backstrap. I'd love to find a large one if possible, but the medium backstrap combined with the HBI trigger that eliminates over travel made a huge difference and it's now a lot more comfortable for me. Then I installed the HB Industries extended safety levers. They give me a little bit of extra leverage and it feels a lot better for me. Then I swapped out the stock bolt catch and release lever for this extended bolt catch and release lever from Lingle Industries. I felt like the one that came with the gun worked pretty well for holding the bolt open, but it was a little inconsistent for me when trying to release the bolt on a fresh magazine. Now this extended lever from Lingle Industries didn't immediately fix the issues, but I've been working on breaking it in and I think it should hopefully be a lot better than the stock configuration today. Now lastly, there are a few different options when it comes to stock on the Bren 2, but for this one I wanted to stick with the OEM stock because I really like the aesthetic and I thought the feel would be to my liking as well. So I picked up the Bren 2 waffle stock and fortunately I was right, it feels great honestly. It folds and retains nicely and locks up tightly when deployed, and the cheek weld is a perfect height for my Holosun optic as well. I do have some concerns about the plastic locking latch inside the stock body, and I've heard that some people have experienced issues with it as well, but so far it's been working well for me so we'll see how it goes today. So that's what we got going on for today guys, it's going to be my first range trip with this gun as an SBR so I'm super excited about this, let's hit the range and have some fun with my Bren 2 SBR.
So guys, I want to give you an idea of what the CZ Brand 2 sounds like unsuppressed versus suppressed now that I have the suppressed setting on my gas regulator. So I'm going to fire two shots unsuppressed, slow fire into the pumpkin. And then I'm going to cut over to two more shots suppressed with the Dead Air Sandman S and with the gas regulator adjusted to the suppressed setting. So let's start off with two shots unsuppressed. All right, guys, I'm gonna be real with you here. This gun is simply phenomenal. I seriously love this thing so much. I've been shooting a ton of nine millimeter lately, so it took me a few minutes to get used to the soft recoil, the much louder report, and significantly more concussion. But once I did, it was so much fun, guys. I shot 260 rounds today and had no failures at all, which is exactly what I would expect. The only thing I will say is this Wolf Brass Case 556 ammunition that I was using today is slightly underpowered, so there were a handful of times that the bolt didn't lock back for me on an empty magazine. Other than that, I had no issues at all with cycling. I was getting a perfect four o'clock to 4.30 ejection unsuppressed, and ultimately this gun is really just a range toy for me, so I'm perfectly fine with that. The CZ waffle stock is incredibly comfortable. You'll see here that I was running it one notch out from fully closed, and I did notice sometimes when I mounted the gun, it clicked forward a little bit, but then as soon as the gun was against my shoulder, it didn't move at all, and it's extremely comfortable. My CZ Scorpion does that too, so I think it's something to do with the adjustment mechanism that CZ uses. I folded and unfolded and slammed the stock closed several times. I had no issues at all, so I'll definitely keep an eye on it because I know some people have had issues with these breaking on them, but so far it's been running beautifully for me. The padded and textured butt plate is extremely comfortable against my shoulder, and the cheek weld on the stock is fantastic 
for me. That trigger shoe upgrade from HB Industries makes a huge difference. It was way easier to run the trigger quick today. I had no issues with it all and it really felt great to me. Combining the minimized over travel with the HBI trigger shoe and the CZ medium backstrap on the pistol grip, I didn't get any cramping my hand at all today. It felt way, way better than the last time I had it out. The HB Industries safety lever felt great. It was much easier to actuate than the stock one. Now the bolt catch and release lever from Lingle Industries was decent. I still found that sometimes it took quite a bit of pressure to drop the bolt on a fresh magazine. I actually found it was a little bit easier to drop the bolt using my thumb on the left side than it was to use my trigger finger on the right side. It wasn't how I was originally intending on using it, but I actually kind of liked it like that. When you're inserting a fresh magazine, the natural position of your thumb is pretty much right where that bolt release is sitting. It's actually a little bit quicker to me than going up to the standard bolt release on the top of the lower receiver. I'm really hoping this will break in a little bit more over time because I do prefer using my trigger finger to drop the bolt when I can. But either way, it's definitely an improvement over the OEM release. Although I didn't have to use it much, I did really like the HB Industries extended charging handle. The action in this gun is insanely smooth, guys. It's so easy to charge. Again, I don't really think the extended charging handle is necessary, especially since it didn't interfere with my Holosun optic previously, but it's definitely a really nice part, so I would recommend it if it's something you want. I had some hesitations with the HB Industries handguard because I really love the aesthetics of the OEM handguard from CZ, but I have to say, any concerns that I had completely melted away as soon as I started shooting it. This handguard is extremely practical and ergonomic. I think it looks great, and the Troy m -Lock vertical grip worked fantastic for me as well. I felt like I had a lot more leverage with my support hand on the handguard today, which made doubles, triples, and quads super easy to pull off. The dead air single port key micro break continued to impress me today. It's insanely flat shooting unsuppressed and the concussion is really not too bad honestly. It's not uncomfortable for me in any way shape or form but keep in mind I do shoot outside so if you're shooting this inside you might not make a lot of friends because although there isn't a ton of felt concussion it is really really loud on this short eight inch barrel. A barrel this short doesn't reach full powder burn for 5.56 so you get some massive fireballs and a huge boom. Outside here at my range it's a ton of fun and really visceral feeling but I'm guessing it probably wouldn't be the most fun gun to shoot inside. Of course eight inches really isn't the most practical barrel length for the terminal ballistics of 5.56, but in my opinion as a range toy, it is hard to beat. That said, I'd say for most people, the 11 inch model is probably the sweet spot in terms of both fun and practicality, but for me personally, I absolutely love the size, weight, compactness, and ergonomics of the 8 inch model. But putting the gas regulator to the new suppress setting from HB Industries is really where this gun comes alive. With the gas regulator on the suppress setting using the Dead Air Sam Man S, this gun is phenomenally flat shooting, guys. It is so, so soft. It almost feels like shooting a 22. It's really, really really ridiculous. Just looking at the ejection pattern for the brass, last time I was out, it was ejecting around 1.30 or so. But today with the new suppressor setting turned on, it was ejecting a lot closer to three o'clock, which is much, much better. Shooting this gun suppressed completely eliminates any concussion and really cuts down on the fell recoil, which was already really minimal in the first place. I really had no issues with gas in the face at all, although I did smell the gas a couple of times, but it didn't make my eyes tear up or anything like that. And again, this is another situation where shooting outside does have its benefits. So keep that in mind. I'm not sure if it would be the exact same experience if you're shooting inside. But guys, I really can't emphasize this enough. This is almost the softest shooting suppressed 5.56 gun that I've ever shot. The only 5.56 gun I've ever shot that's softer shooting suppressed is my Battle Arms Custom AR-15 SBR. But I've got to be honest, guys, this gun is really, really close. It's also nice that it takes no tools whatsoever to adjust the gas regulator. Just two quick clicks from unsuppressed to suppressed and then two clicks back again. It's extremely easy to go back and forth while you're on the range. Much easier so than my Battle Arms SBR that does require an extremely long Allen key and six full rotations of the adjustment nut to go from unsuppressed to suppressed and then six full rotations again to go back to unsuppressed. The Battle Arms SBR adjustment really isn't bad. It just takes some tools and would be harder to do under stress, but the CZ Bren 2 is phenomenally easy in that regard. When you get the gas regulator service from HB Industries, they give you a stronger piston spring that you can use. It's supposed to make the gun even softer shooting both unsuppressed and suppressed, but I stuck with the OEM spring because I was already just on the edge of reliability unsuppressed, and it really doesn't feel like it needs to be any softer suppressed for me. I'm still absolutely loving this Holosun Ames Red Dot. I honestly think I'll probably get more of them in the future. The large viewing window gives you a lot of room for error with head placement. The glass is extremely clear and the dot looks great for me. And although I normally prefer an absolute co-witness, the lower one-third co-witness of this Ames optic combined with the cheek weld of the CZ waffle stock is a great combination for me. And lastly, again, I know I talk about this a lot, but I really love the steel reinforced QD sling point on the upper receiver. It works great with my Savvy Sniper sling in a single point configuration. Another thing that I think is a really nice touch is this notch in the brass deflector that locks the stock in place when it's folded. It's a really neat feature and gives you excellent retention when the stock is folded. Then to unfold it, you basically just pull it down out of the notch and then swing it back around. I know the SCAR and more recently the MCX have become incredibly popular, but in my opinion, I think people are really overlooking the brand, myself included, honestly. When I first started looking at the brand at the local gun shop, the salesperson told me that nobody really ever asked to see them. I think that's really a shame, honestly, because it's such an awesome, reliable, smooth, lightweight, ergonomic, fun, and well-balanced platform, in my opinion. But again, I really can't judge because I slept on the brand for quite some time myself. So I know a lot of people out there are wondering what's better, the CZ Bren 2, the SIG MCX, or the FN SCAR? Well, I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm really not sure, but I've been wondering that myself as well. So pretty soon, I'm actually gonna film a video comparing the Bren 2 to the MCX and the SCAR, and we'll see which one comes out on top. If that 
that's something you're interested in seeing, then let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss it. So that's going to be all for today, guys. We've got a lot more videos coming up soon, including more ARs, AKs, PCCs, handguns, and shotguns. Remember to like and subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned, and thanks for stopping by.